So I borrowed a camera from my mom. And to make a tripod, I took this this hat rack that I that I had, and, <laughs> and I took a I took a little picture frame, and I balanced this picture frame on the hat rack, and then I balanced the little camera on the picture frame, and I stood in front of it, and and that was my tripod, and I would I would make these really crappy videos. John Ferrara is the Instagram man. He helps entrepreneurs create raving fans position themselves as an authority and engage with their ideal clients using Instagram. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy Viterra. John Ferrara is our Instagram guru. Only that you live under a rock, you had to have seen his, his Instagram uh, page. He's got amazing posts, he's got amazing advice, and what we're here today is to hear everything about his story, how he got started, how he learned all his tips about Instagram, and how he shares that with everybody, and actually how he learned how to grow an Instagram account. So, John, why don't we start um, with you just telling us a little bit about you and where you got started. Um, yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's, um, sure. I love uh, the privilege of being here. I started uh, teaching Instagram by mistake, really. I, I never really thought that I would be doing this. And if you asked me maybe, you know, five, six years ago, who if I'd be teaching social media, I would laugh because the truth is that before I even started to teach social media, it had been maybe five or six years that I'd even touch a computer. I was not tech savvy at all. Uh, I wasn't familiar with any technology. Social media was non-existent in my life. Um, that's when Facebook came out. That's when Instagram started. Uh, YouTube was, was, a, was a big thing at the time. And I was so obsolete to the point where I wasn't even in, in the space. I was actually um, I was actually a mechanic for ten years. I fixed cars, and then after that, I was uh, I was uh, in construction. I was um, doing drywall in in houses, and um, and that's where everything started. Really, it was it was uh, you know I was always working with my hands. Not a lot of people know this, but I mean they might know it now if they're watching my stories. But I've always been good with you know fixing things with my hands, and so I've always made a living with my hands. Um, but then it got to the point where, you know, working a job where, uh, and, and I know that there's a lot of listeners here and, and a lot of the people that are watching us live right now uh, can, can relate to is that, you know, w waking up day in and day out in, in a life that you've, I mean, we've all created our lives, quote unquote, but um, a life that you're not really happy about. And um, I remember there was a time in my life where I didn't even want to wake up. You know, I, I didn't want to uh, face the day. It was a very dark time in my life. Um, I did not like what I was doing. I was working outside uh, in Canada. If you guys don't know, it's extremely cold. So in the winter times, it's extremely cold, very, very hot in the in the summertime. Um, you know, you're always uh, outside and you're you're in the middle of uh, of just a, a huge construction site. And I was not in love with the work that I was doing, and I fell into a deep depression. And I remember that it was like that for four, approximately four and a half years of my life where I was, I, I always say that I, I didn't even crack a smile for, oh, for, wow. for the, for four years of my life, you know, smiling became a chore or it became fake rather than something genuine. And I remember that my third, my, my 28th birthday was approaching. I was 27 at the time. And I had looked back at the last four years of my life and it was a big blur. I don't remember a thing. Uh, the wow. same thing I was doing day in and day out. The pain just meshed and, and it just kind of uh, overpowered everything. And, and, you know, when something is so painful in your life, your brain tends to delete it. That's, that's what happened. Still to this day, it's very hard to remember what I was doing and, and how I was living. But I remember the feelings of, of, and how it impacted my life. So, so I made a promise. John, it's almost like you were numb, right? It's almost so like numb. life was, was word, just going by. It yeah. It, yeah, it would be numb. Mm -hmm. and I remember my 20th birthday was approaching and it got to the point where I, I made myself a, a promise. I remember I was, I was, I was in this, this um, social club. It was, a, it was a, a, a cafe, a coffee shop. And um, a lot of uh, seniors would go there and they would hang out with their friends and stuff. And, and I would, and a lot of them did the same work that I was doing at the time. And it was his life. It was like, I was looking into my own future 
and I saw one of them look at somebody else and they said, hey, do you, do you want to pass play cards to pass the time? And I stopped and I, and, and I shook my head and I was like, play cards to pass the time? What are you waiting for, to die? Are you kidding me right now? You You're, said that to yourself. To myself, yeah. I was thinking to myself because I'm just watching from afar. I'm a very quiet person. I'm very behind the scenes and I just, I, I do a lot of watching. And, I, and he said to, to, to another guy, it just clears there, remember so clearly, let's play cards to pass the time. And I was thinking like, are you seriously waiting to die? What, what's, what's going on in your life? And I, it was as if like I was looking to, in the path that I, I was taking myself. And that Almost was like you were watching a movie, exactly. the movie of your life. That's exactly what was happening, except, you know, 40 years down the road. And it was that moment and it was that one sentence that completely changed the, the, the whole trajectory of my life where I made a promise to myself and I said, you know, I will not live like this anymore. There's going to be a change. I'm going to do something to get out of this. I'm going to uh, become financially independent, not free, but independent where I'm responsible for my own finances. And that's where something sparked in my head. And I don't know I didn't know how or where or where to turn to. I was, I lived in an area and in a community where everybody did the same thing and everybody listened to everybody else and everybody was keeping up with the Joneses. It was, it was uh, a community where being right was more important than what was right. You know, wow. it was, yeah, it was, it was very, it was a very negative community that I grew up in. You know, thank God that, you know, my parents were so, so comforting and loving to me and so supportive throughout my entire life where they gave me the option almost, almost like, uh, it was almost like, um, the, uh, they were giving me permission to, 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 to make the change. They supported me so much. And, and my birthday was coming up. It was my 20th birthday. And that's when I made the promise. You're going to be out of this life. And at that very moment, I didn't know who to turn to. And where to go so i don't know if you can see behind me but this is where <laughs> i ended up cracking my own books i went up cracking open a couple books and where i come from it's not cool to read you don't read where i come from so i used to download them on my phone and i used to pretend i was text messaging people but really i was just reading you know uh, ebooks on my phone and just uh just slowly i would be absorbing all this information so quick question so growing up i mean all this time all these years you had not been accustomed to reading books right so at that I, point in time I you now were books at the time and okay it was more school yeah so by now you were 27 and for the first time you now really got inspired into reading and educating yourself mm -hmm. okay that's exactly what happened so I, need, I knew I need to learn finance. So the first book I cracked open was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Very, very uh, uh, introductory book. Uh, I, I do recommend it. Another great one that I ended up reading was uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, Babylon by uh, George Clayson. Yeah. I started with these books. And, and things started to turn in my head. And I started to see things in a different way. And I remember those same people would come up to me and they would give me financial advice. And they would be, John, you're doing this wrong. You should be doing it this way. But these are the people that were uh, having their own financial burdens and their own financial trouble. You don't take, for everybody that's watching right now, you do not take financial advice from people who are not doing, <laughs> don't have the results that you want. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so I ended up cracking open these books and I started reading and one book turned to two, turned to seven. Um, one of the greatest books that I've ever read that really changed the, the whole course of my life was Think and Grow Rich. Uh, that book has gone on to change millions of lives. Right then and there is when I learned about the subconscious brain. Right then and there is when I started to learn about personal development and, uh, and really the things that internally had to change instead of in order to get the external change, right? What's happening in more about the mindset, right? There's the cause that's happening. And then there's uh, there's the effect, which is on the outside. Right. And that's, that's where I started to really dive into that. And this was stuff that I had no idea even existed. Right. I, all I knew was, was, you know, my hammer and nails and I'd be just going at it every single day. And, and, you know, such a, such a drastic change in, in such a short period of time. I went like this, it was about six months where I was just diving in to the point where I was studying 18 hours a day. A lot of people ask me, how are you working and studying 18 hours a day? You know, I would go to work with, with earphones in my ears and I would listen to audiobooks and interviews and uh, uh, seminars and online uh, um, uh, teachings and all that stuff. And then I, after work, I would hit the books and I would make notes and keep a journal and, 
and all this stuff. Then what my favorite is, is I used to, which I don't really recommend, but I used to go to sleep with my earphones in my ear and I would listen, hoping that <laughs> while I'd be sleeping, my subconscious would, would you know, absorb something good into it. So six months went by, nothing changed, nothing. And you would think I was, I was clueless. I said, you know, I'm learning all this stuff and six months go by and you're not, nothing's changed. This is, well, you were absorbing, right? It's like you, you, you were taking that time before you were starting to take action. Right. But that right there was the missing ingredient. Action. Uh I I had not figured it out until I realized that there was the, the, the only thing missing was the action. So I ended up seeking a, a mentor, a friend of mine, um, introduced me to a business owner that was a local. I went to go shadow him every Saturday. I'd put on my suit and I'd go to his office and I'd learn from him. And uh, I didn't have to, I I remember going up to him. I was 20, I was 27 at the time. I know I was 28 at the time. And I went up to him and I said, um, listen, I want to learn from you because he was a very successful man. He came from a different country. He he built this whole empire, him and his brother. And I said, I want to learn from you. I want to come and work for you for free. I don't care if I have to clean toilets. I just want to be around this area. Because I remember one of the greatest things that you can do in order to achieve success is find somebody who has the results that you want. You model them, right? Success right, right. Want. So that's what I did. And I ended up going there. And, and he before I could even finish my sentence, he stopped me and he said, John, don't, don't even worry about it. You come here every Saturday. You come here as many times as you want. Um, but you knew this person before you knew that he had all these skills and and you knew he was a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know he was a mentor at this moment. He didn't, he never did this with anybody. I just took the shot. Uh, I went up to him and I asked him and he invited me and he was, he was, he did a lot of great stuff for me. Okay. So then every Saturday I'd I'd go see him and I'd learn from him. And again, I was, uh, reading my books and then, and then I knew that I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do with this information, but I knew I wanted to share it. So then move into my first YouTube channel and under the name success messenger. Now, I, th- let me ask you a question. Now, all this information that you were learning about, it was just generic information about business and self-development or at that point, was it already specific about Instagram? We haven't even scratched the surface of Instagram yet. Instagram okay. is non-existent at this part of the story. <laughs> so it was more generic about business and self-development. Business, finance, personal development. Uh, uh, yeah, all that stuff. So you didn't have a business idea yet. Okay. All no, right. Keep course. going. So I started my YouTube channel. And okay. from this, uh, I started making these YouTube videos, you know, uh, how to achieve success. Um, the five things that are stopping you that are holding you back from achieving success, um, limiting beliefs. I started just making these really crappy videos that, you know, I look back and I cringe just (laughs) thinking about how bad they really were because I had no video experience. To be honest, I had, I mean, people look at my Instagram stories today and they see, you know, I have all these tripods and, um, equipment and I do all this fancy editing. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Kudos to you because you were at okay. least making the videos, you know? Yeah, like, well, yeah. For all the people out there that want to make videos and want to get in front of the camera, at least do it, you know? Yeah. It's like you got to start. You got to start somewhere, you know? Have to. Exactly. So I, I, I really, I leave all these videos up and you can go search them. Yeah. You can find them yourself, no problem. As a reminder of my journey. I, d- I don't delete any posts on social media. I leave them there purposely to see the story that it tells. The evolution, exactly. Right, right. And I think that that's very important. There's a lot of, there's a lot of debate whether or not you should um, portray this per- perfect life on social no. media where you actually start losing that authenticity and that, that, um, that transparency inside your, your, your actual of who you are as a human being. We can get into that later though. But, um, but the truth is that, you know, I started, I didn't have a camera at the time. I didn't have a tripod. I didn't, I barely even knew what I was talking about. I would, I would read, make notes and then talk about it on camera. So I borrowed a camera from my mom and to make a tripod, I took this, this hat rack that I, that I had (laughs) and and I took a, I took a little picture frame and I balanced this picture frame on the hat rack. And then I balanced the little camera on the picture frame. And I stood in front of it and, and that was my tripod. And I would, I would make these really crappy videos, like I said, and, 
eventually I got about 500 subscribers on, on YouTube. And, and, yeah, like, like it was, most of them were friends and family, but whatever, you know, like <laughs> it doesn't matter. Eventually, you know, and, and, um, and, um, I started making videos, but n- not even close to the videos that like that I make today. There were just more uh, success videos and stuff. And um, at that point, you know, I made about I made one a week, and it ended up lasting me about maybe four months at that point. And then, and then I found Instagram. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.